Even though people often use their names interchangeably, cement and concrete are actually different things. Cement is a key ingredient in making concrete, along with water and aggregate. Making concrete begins with producing cement, which is essential for holding the water and aggregates together. There are various types of cement, but the most common one is called ordinary Portland cement. It got its name because its color looks like the stone found on the Isle of Portland in Dorset, England. The main things used to make cement are limestone and clay. People usually get them from quarries by blasting or using big machines to dig them out of the ground. After they're dug up, they're taken to a crushing plant where they're crushed into smaller pieces. These crushed bits of limestone and clay are mixed together in the right amounts to make a kind of mixture. This mixture then goes to a mill, which is like a big rotating tube. Inside the mill, the materials are ground up into a fine powder. This grinding process makes the next chemical reactions work better and makes sure the mixture is all the same. The fine powder is then heated up in a tall tower where hot gases from the kiln make it even hotter. As the powder moves through the tower, some of the limestone breaks down into calcium oxide, lime. After that, the heated up powder goes into a long, round furnace called a rotary kiln. The temperature in the kiln gets super high, about 1450 degrees Celsius or 26 and 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the kiln, the powder goes through lots of tricky chemical changes and heating, and it turns into small marble-like pieces called clinker. The clinker is made of calcium silicates, aluminates, and ferrites. The clinker comes out of the kiln and goes through a cooler where air cools it down. Cooling it is important to keep it good quality and stop unwanted crystals forming. After cooling, the clinker is mixed with gypsum and other stuff like fly ash, slag, or pozzolana in cement mills to make a fine powder. Gypsum helps control how fast the cement hardens. Then, the cement is ready to be taken to the concrete factory. Since cement is really important for making concrete, labs at cement plants regularly test each stage of the process with chemical and physical tests. They also check the final product to make sure it meets all the industry standards. Once the cement is done, the next step is to get the aggregate. Aggregate is the most vital part of concrete, making up about 75% of it by volume. Aggregate is made up of gravel and sand. Sand fills the gaps between the gravel, making the concrete stronger and more consistent. A good mix of coarse and fine particles in the aggregate means less cement is needed, making the process cheaper. Now let's talk about the unsung heroes of making concrete. Admixtures. These chemicals have different benefits and can be added to improve concrete. Plasticizers make the concrete easier to work with, meaning it can be molded and placed without separating or bleeding too much water, even in tight spots. Accelerators or retarders are other types of admixtures that speed up or slow down how quickly the concrete hardens. Because concrete can crack when pulled, scientists have made chemicals that make it stronger under tension. Adding fibers made of stainless steel, glass, or carbon can also make concrete tougher. Now that all the materials are ready, we can start making concrete. First, we figure out how much cement, aggregate, admixtures, and water we need based on what strength and qualities we want the concrete to have. There's a whole field called concrete mix design just for figuring out the right amounts of each material to get the strength we need. Building codes have rules about how much cement, aggregate, and water to use for different types of construction. Next, we mix all the ingredients really well to make sure they're all mixed together evenly. Before, people did this by hand with shovels on a flat surface, like a concrete slab. But nowadays, we usually use concrete mixers, which do it faster. Mixing makes sure the cement is spread out evenly in the mix. Once the dry stuff is mixed, we add water bit by bit while still mixing. When water and cement mix, 
they make a paste called cement paste. This paste hardens over time, getting stronger and more durable as it does. The mixing process continues until the concrete has a uniform consistency. During this step, it's we keep mixing until the concrete looks the same all the way through. While we're mixing, we check how easy it is to work with the concrete. If it's too thick or thin, we can add more water or dry stuff to get it right. Once the concrete is mixed just right, we move it to where we want it to go. We can pour it into molds made of formwork, or we can use special machines like pumps or conveyors. When we're putting the concrete in place, we have to be careful not to let the big bits separate from the rest of the mix. After we put the concrete in place, we need to squash it down to get rid of any holes or air bubbles. We usually use vibrating machines or other tools like tamping or rolling to do this. Squashing it down like this makes sure the concrete is solid and strong. Once it's squashed down, we have to keep it wet and at the right temperature for a while so it can get even stronger. This is called curing. We might keep it wet or cover it with special stuff like blankets or plastic sheets. Curing can take a few days or even weeks depending on the type of concrete and how strong we want it to be. Once the concrete has dried enough, we can do different things to make it look the way we want. We might smooth it out, level it, use a tool called a trowel, or add decorative touches. Cement is super useful for building because it can do lots of different things. Just in the United States, we make over $4 billion worth of hydraulic cement every year. That's the kind that can harden even underwater. It's used in about $20 billion worth of concrete projects. And worldwide, the concrete industry is worth over $600 billion. That's a huge amount of money. For more on how everyday households are made, subscribe to FactoryFi.